Okay, so here's all the parts. This differential is going to get a trail gear mini spool, Crown 538 gears, the full rebuild kit from uh, Low Range Off Road, and their axle bearings, which I've already installed. These bearing races have to come out. But they're actually really hard to get out because they're kind of rounded over on the back side of them. I'm just going to use a punch and probably various other random tools. Okay, now it's time to put in the, the pinion bearings. Which are these two. I highly recommend using using a bearing insulation tool. I've installed them before with, with just a punch and it's actually kind of easy to chip them. And you know that's just doing ugly work. We don't do ugly work around here. You can actually feel it when it's flush, or you can kind of look in there and tell that it's when it's, when it's uh, not flush, but seated all the way down. Okay, now would be a good time to go ahead and put the mini spool inside the differential carrier. And according to the instructions, it says it doesn't use the side bearings. I mean the side... But, uh, shims or whatever, so just drop them in, put the lid on it, and I have another video about the whole uh, torque specs and all that. There's really not much to uh, know about assembling the actual differential, just remember red Loctite, blue Loctite on the smaller bolts, 27 to 32 foot pounds and 58 to 66, and tighten the star pattern, and that's pretty much all there is to know, you have a, okay, I'll just go ahead and use the press um, since I have one. Okay, so this Samurai already has, uh, it already had 538 gears installed, that was the one it stripped out. So for the starting point, I'm going to go ahead and use the shims that they had in there already. Oh yeah, put the shim first. There's the bearing on there. I'm not going to show that because I already have a video whenever I uh, bought my press of, of how to do this with the with the crush leaf. Just stick it in the press like that and you know, go press it. Okay, now I'm ready for the really tedious part that nobody wants to do. And it's to go ahead and set the backlash and put gear marking compound on it and see see how the the teeth mesh right now. The reason why this part is so uh, tedious and, you know, not fun at all because you might have to take it apart and press the gear, the bearing on and off a few times in order to get the pinion depth correct. Just go ahead and install this without the crush sleeve for now because you, you, you're not ready. You might have to disassemble it. Almost guaranteed to have to disassemble it. No seal, no, no, nothing. Just the bearing.
It's actually probably the proper preload. <laughs> it's not really tight, it's just barely tight. So all I'm doing right now is setting the backlash and then I'm going to put some gear marker compound on it to see if the pinion depth is correct. If it feels like they're in, they're in. First time I've done one of these I had, you know, to me it was kind of, that was troubling me a little bit. Like, If the, and, if, and if you think you have the caps wrong, you could actually like line up the threads and you can see they're not lined up. And if you set it on here with just a little pressure and these, these spin, it's fine. It's the right side. Okay. Oh yeah, you set the backlash by turning these little side things. Okay, so it's probably blurry, but um, that's about six thousandths of clearance of uh, backlash. So now I'm going to throw some gear marking compound on it and uh, see where the how, how the see how the gears mesh or whatever. Now you have to do spin it in both directions and see how it uh, how it um, I guess you'd say like rubs the paint off or whatever. Okay, now to do the other side. I don't know how well you can see, you're going to be able to see this on camera, but you can see this is the drive side. This was the first shot at it. And I feel like that's pretty good. That's good enough. For the coast side, it seems like it might. Nah, I think it's good enough. Close enough for me. It's, it's probably pretty hard to tell from the, from the camera view, but... This pattern most most closely resembles this one where it's it's not centered from top to bottom but it's kind of like you know towards the outer edge of the tooth and it says the pinion is too shallow when it's like that so what I'm going to do is add I'm going to add a little bit of shims and then I'm going to redo the whole uh, the whole thing all over again okay so I have it all back apart and I'm about to add this 9,000 shim um, I'm pretty sure it's 9,000 so I can only measure it with a dial caliper and it measures 9,000 I'm not really sure if this is the right amount to add or not but we'll find out okay now I'm almost back where I left off I mean, this really is some pretty tedious work. It, it's, I really don't like doing them. But I added a 10,000 shim. I redid the, I put it all back together, redid the backlash. That's about six thousandths. We take the gears, or the ring opinion, or the ring gear, whatever, and spin it again. Okay, so what it did, the reason why I added the shim was because this pattern was right on the edge. So it actually brought it down a little bit. Not quite center, but it moved it. It just looks better. That's all I can say. It, it just... It's it's hard to tell, but it matches. It just matches that that uh, correct pattern better. Because before it was missing in this area, it was looking more like this one where it's right on the edge. 
Okay, so now that you're at this point, um, you're really not even finished. You're pretty much maybe halfway there. Th that's why I say this is a pretty tedious, um, I, I think I consider it kind of complicated job. And I, I feel like anybody could do it as long as you're like kind of like, you, you'd have to have some dedication to do this because, it, yeah, it, it, to me it is kind of difficult. It's especially difficult to make a video on this because there's so many things going on. I'm trying to watch, trying to keep, well, I could have done a better job by having some kind of, uh, built some kind of wood cradle for this to hold it for me or something like that. But that just, that just wasn't an option. I, I didn't have time to do that. And there's a lot of adjustments, a lot of uh, tedious things to do. And I know I didn't cover the back, how to set the backlash very good except for the number, but it's going to have to be set again here in a minute anyway, or here in an hour or two. So at this point, you have to disassemble it one more time. But whenever you reassemble it, you will, you will now put your seal in and put the crush sleeve in. And this is what becomes difficult. Because in order to crush this, you have to crush it down, and you can only crush it once, and you have to slowly crush it until until it reaches a point where you can stick this little inch pounds. This is not the best tool to use, but it's one of the cheapest inch pounds of torque wrench you can buy from a local auto parts store like O'Reilly's or something. You will have to adapt it to this, and it's something like 10, 10 or 15 inch pounds. I don't know. I'll get that spec whenever I actually do it, but I'm going to have to come to a like a halfway point, I'm at, like I'm done with this half of the video, this is it. And another thing that becomes complicated with this is that, I'm going to admit right now, I'm not really going to be doing anything, I'm just going to be talking about it for a little bit. It, it was, I'm, anyway. So whenever you go to crush the crush leaf, it's a 30 millimeter socket, and you're going to have to put in a vise. My little vise isn't even really good enough. But when i done the one in my Samurai, it, um, it felt like I was going to rip, the, the, uh, rip this off the table. I mean, it's not, it is about an inch thick plywood table. Um, whatever. So, I, I got the, this is actually an alternator bracket. And what I did was I drilled a hole in it to where you could bolt it to this and then bolt it to the vise. And, th and this is... It, it, it would probably be better for you to have something that holds off four bolts, I don't know. But um, I'm going to go ahead and use this again. Hopefully it works. It works out. And for the socket, I've heard from people that you'll break a half inch drive to go ahead and get you a three quarter inch drive. I believe it. Mine didn't break, but I can, I can tell you this much. Even with the breaker bar this long, it's probably like a... 8 inch or, or 18 inch or something, there's no way you're going to be able to turn that. You're going to be able to crush the crush leaf. You're gonna, I had to put a, a pretty long pipe on this in order to do it, but I managed to do it right here on this, on this uh, table. And one more thing I wanted to point out about the, the pinion depth is I use the same shims, the, the, same, the, the same gears and everything. This one had some type of failure and when I use the same shims, I don't know, that's kind of dumb to talk about, whatever. So at this point, the next step is to set the pinion preload, you know, with the crush leaf and the seal in it, and then you still have to disassemble this, you know, disassemble the, the, the whole thing to do that.